screw the Ben Askren, Jake Paul situation. Uh, yeah. Jake Walker versus a thousand six year olds. I would take them out. TMZ yeah. goes, Jake Walker beats up a six year old. Yeah. yeah. These oh, hands are rated E for everyone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Woes of Bros. I am your host, Connor Stoops. Oh, we're on. I'm Mike Blutstein. How are you? <laughs> Mikey, wait, on? lights on, nobody's home. What's going on there? You know what, dude? I, uh, I'm i feeling a little bit too famous for the podcast today. I'm not going to oh, lie. Oh, really? Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. I just, we, we've been hanging out with the guests. And to be honest with you, the guests mm. that we have on, and I usually grab a drink after. Yeah, of course. And, uh, in the green you know, room. In the green room, we have a drink, and, and we talk about kind of my career. You know, we spend a lot of time talking about the guests, but let's talk about Mike. <laughs> and I'm just hearing a lot of feedback that, uh, you know, I should have a spinoff, maybe, of my own show. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Total spinoff. That'd be awesome, dude. Maybe just the woe of bro or something like that. Interesting. Well, uh, that's rude. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up uh, because we we don't want Mike going off on his own show. We got to keep the woes of bros alive. And uh, yes. you're going to love this episode today. Mikey, tell him, uh, tell him a little bit about our guest. All right, so what do you want to know? That our guest is a superstar? That our guest <laughs> is one of the most talented actors I've ever seen in my life? Whoa, 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 whoa. Too much, too much, too much. Or maybe that our guest is a musician that will sing hey, like a I, sweet I, hummingbird into your ears. Mikey, 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 you're giving them a little too much. You got to tease them. Because I'm not saying any tease of Tease them a little bit, buddy. <laughs> I'm telling you nothing. But what I will say is this. Our guest today is someone that uh, is near and dear to my heart, is very, very talented, and uh, is arguably... The biggest name that we could get. <laughs> Trust us, we had to pull some strings for this one. We pull some strings. So <laughs> but, we're uh, excited. before we get into that guy, Mikey, how's your week been, buddy? It's good, dude. It's good. I um, it's not so good actually. I'll be oh honest. God! Okay, that was a total <laughs> 360. <laughs> for a second, for a second, I was like, let me say the. It's you, you know when someone asks you how you doing, and your impulse is always be like, oh, I'm doing great. Yeah. And then and then you think about it inside. There's a little voice, and it's like, no, I'm no, not. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah. So what happened? Well, Therapist this week or no? Well, my voice has got a megaphone in his hands. Oh, God. He's and screaming. He's screaming. <laughs> I just picture um, the Inside Out characters. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Yeah. Um, no, you know, is my week going good? Not really. Um, let's see. I, uh, I officially am fat. So I've, I've, uh, oh. I've had that, that diagnosis come Wait, my what way. You, what you weighing? Because I guarantee I weigh more than you right now. <laughs> Dude, I went from 165 to 195. So wow. 30, hey. 30 elbs. Hey. 30 elbs. Hey, so fat. what? You gained the whole baby. <laughs> yeah. Is that how much babies weigh? 30 pounds? That's a heavy I don't baby. Know. That, I mean, you're like, all right, a toddler, toddler. I got, I got, I got a two Thanksgiving thir- turkeys in my, uh, in, my, in my gut right now. That's pretty uh, nice. I got, I got, I'm fat enough now that my neighbor down the hall stopped me and he's like, hey, buddy. <laughs> Where you headed? And I was like, oh, you know, go, going to the gym. And he's like, guys like us, we got to stick together. <laughs> I didn't know what he meant by that. So I was like, what do you, what do you mean what by you that? Mean he's by like, that? he's like, people always in LA trying to, you know, body shame us, tell us about our image. But like you and I were in the same boat. <laughs> and this guy was like 250 pounds. And I was like, what, dude, what do you mean we're in the same boat? He's like, and that boat's sinking. And I was like, all right, I got to. Gotta, with, all gotta, this, <laughs> with all this weight on the boat, it's sinking. I was like, I gotta get away from this negativity, man. No, but oh, it's uh, it's good, man. My, my week overall, you know, pushing stuff forward. Uh, I am. Uh, I I don't really know. I I don't think I have anything new. Like, you know, you know that feeling where life is just kind of like at a moment before things happen, mm. uh, and you're just like waiting for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. It's almost like frustrating. Like I feel like I'm on the precipice of things starting to happen, but uh, it's not. It's almost like it's been storm clouding for like a week, but no rain, mm. and I'm looking for showers. So, well, it is April, buddy. It is April. April showers bring May flowers. Yeah. So I'm wait. Oh, I will. I so I'm going to Vegas. Um, oh yeah. I am vaccinated now, so Congrats. I am go- going to safely go. No side effects, by the way. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What's that, buddy? What's that thing on your face? 
Is there? Oh, my beautiful nose. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. worry, I'm worry for a second. So sorry. Yeah, no side effects. I know that a lot of people had some side effects. I guess my body's just in better condition. For sure. Um, yeah. So no. It's all no that side weight effects. you gained. It buffers you. <laughs> <laughs> buffers you. Got him. My body's like I've already been through enough. I'll get. I'll cut you a break. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to Vegas. That'll be good. And we're going for Carolina's birthday. Nice. Who man. I have got clearance to use her name again in the podcast. Yeah. For- what was that all about? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so we're going for that. <laughs> good man, good man. So dodge that like a ninja. And, uh, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to a little something called uh, Hawaii. Oh, I'm going Hawaii. to Hawaii too, dude, at the end of the year, though. That's dope, man. Yeah, That's so yeah. sick. Looks, hey, yeah. look, you got some things to look forward to, so that should brighten up your week a little bit. <sighs> you know, I need them. I need them. It's almost like a dose of sanity sometimes. Like, all right, so uh, what am I looking forward to? And I look, and it's nothing. And so now I've got two trips. I'm also going to Seattle this weekend. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff. Oh my God, Mikey, you're a freaking world traveler, bro. He gets two vaccines and the man thinks he can go anywhere he wants. I mean, some would say legally I can. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) That's very true. That's very true. Very true. Yeah, man. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the week is fine. Like it's been a lot of, uh, a lot of like booking travel and hanging out with my girlfriend and, uh, overall, man, I'm just, I'm happy. Things Good, are finally man. starting to look up. Uh, but yeah, what about you? What's new? What's 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 going on in the life of Connor Soups besides that beautiful, luscious beard on your face? Oh, you noticed, buddy? You noticed? <laughs> uh, you look like, you know what it is, man? You look like you just went camping or something. Uh, you know what? I, I did, but uh, I kind, oh, yeah, we talked I about kind that. of did. That was two weeks ago in the last <laughs> oh, time. Shit. Mikey, where you been, buddy? <laughs> oh, uh, God, right. No, but uh, I mean... Aside from that, uh, this will be l- well when this podcast comes out. It'll be a little bit late, but my friends threw me a surprise party this past weekend for my birthday, so that Uh-oh. was pretty fun, dude. I got way too drunk, and it was still a good time though. Um, other than yeah, that, bro, that's awesome. Um, but how do you uh, feel about surprise parties, by the way? Because I hate them. I hate surprises and I hate celebration. Of here's my life. the thing about surprise parties. I am someone that is hard to surprise because I'm such an overthinker that my brain, my brain comes out with 20 scenarios as to why my friends all of a sudden can't hang out on my birthday weekend. You know what I, you know what I mean? Oh my I'm, God. I'm dude. like, hmm, hmm, what's going on You're on like, my birthday weekend? <laughs> Wait, that's, by the way, for Rob's birthday, I thought we were all going to like have a great time and go on a big trip because he was talking about it. But Doggo said that he's leaving LA and he's moving home. And what? Uh, yeah, he didn't tell you. He's leaving home. Wait, he's moving. He's moving out of LA and going back home. Like he's not. Shut up. Surprise. Mikey, you're fucking <laughs> you, dude. <laughs> nah, That's not, not yeah, funny, yeah, man. Yeah. Come on. Dog, you said you're, you said you're, you're I, I can't be surprised. I'm surprise proof. And I was like, let me get that. Okay, motherfucker. that's not a surprise. Uh, that's a fucking trick. <laughs> <laughs> you tricked me. So, can we talk about something really important, really quick? Yeah. Uh, I want to start a whole thing about uh, lessons that you don't know about a podcast before you start making a podcast. Oh. And I want episode one to be um, repeating outfits. I don't have any more outfits that work, right? Repeat, so, I've worn this one twice. Oh, that's your second or th- is it your it's third time? My second time wearing this one. I think I wore this one last. I, I mean, I, I've worn this shirt every day for the past week, so <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked if I am repeating it back to back. Uh, um, that's but yeah, you need a lot of outfits. And I think after like, what is this, seven, eight, nine, uh, you, you just kind of give up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, definitely hear that. I, I also I just rotate the same the same clothes over and over again. Anyway, like we I should only start, we should same. we should mail each other our shirts. That way, at least we're switching them. You know, you know that's not a bad idea, Mikey. Yeah, that's not yeah. a bad idea. Not oh bad. my gosh. So life, you you had a surprise party. Yep. I, I imagine dating nothing. I'm nope, just gonna still nothing, bro. Honestly, this right. shit's off, dog. Honestly, I, I gotta I got get a co I gotta get a co-host who's having sex or something because like. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude, you're like a sexless creature. And so you get nothing spicy to bring to the podcast. It's like, hey, how you doing, Connor? Nothing, man. I went to church. All right, Wait, dude, great. Well, okay, See fine. I uh, I gobbled down three uh three massive boxes of cosmic brownies this past week. How's that? It's, uh, dangerous. That's, that's, just, that's just pitiful. <laughs> that's not, yeah, it's just <laughs> reckless. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I want to advocate for that on the podcast. Yeah, definitely if anything, not. At least, at least get us a brand deal with them or something. <laughs> Little Debbie, we're coming for you. Yeah, oh, like, gosh. I, no, I, I, I've been coming for him. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. Since I was 12. Little no. Debbie was my best friend growing up. No one else would hang out with me in the last room. It was just me and Little Debbie. 
<laughs> that was your first crush. Oh god, <laughs> still is. <laughs> oh my god, no, but bro, other than this, just like it's been a good week. I've uh, been kicking it, so I'm excited for this uh, next coming week because it's also my other friend's birthday this weekend. So about to go in for that, but yeah, man, that's awesome, man. Life's good. good. We're kicking okay. it. We're chilling. I just, I still have sights set for LA, man. I, I like, I can't get over it enough. I'm just so pumped to get back. I'm gonna hit the ground running once I'm there. So that's just same wait old, till same you old, are, baby. Man. Good. Well, speaking of LA, I want to talk about our uh, our guest who oh. actually just fucking left the place. I feel like everybody good is getting the hell out of LA. They're getting He's the hell out of here, bro. Another example of it. So, yeah. so well, I guess without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is an all-American singer, songwriter, and actor. He's currently on the hit CW show Stargirl as Henry King Jr., a.k.a. Wow. Brainwave. And in the upcoming movie, 12 Mighty Orphans, when he's not busy being typecasted, he spends his days <laughs> making bangers such as Fuck Love, Magnolia, Not Okay, Rolling Stones, and so much more. Guys, he's not just my ex-roommate. But a good friend. It's Jake Austin Walker. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Oh, wow, that was a longer intro than I than That's I beautiful, it was be. man. It was you guys chill on the smoke, and you're like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should hear Mikey's old stories about stealing his dad's cigarettes whenever he was what, like twelve? Dude, not. Good, oh my man. god, really? It's almost like a rite of passage. Like he would steal his dad's, and his dad yeah. would steal his dad's, and made his way to me. I, I hope I can only be so lucky that one day my kid steals my cigarettes. See, I was lucky. My grandma smoked Newports. You weren't trying to steal those. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God! Jake, man, we're, we're, I'm, I just want to—I want to start off real quick by saying it's been like over a year since I've seen you, which is Dude, I know crazy. The last time I think I saw you, we—it might have been what was it? We went out in like West Hollywood for something. I Went guarantee I don't remember the night. Oh no, yeah. that was that was actually <laughs> one of the first nights that I was started dating my ex girlfriend. I remember that. Oh, Where did oh we go? wow. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of her, I miss her. I miss you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Call me, that's please. How he, that's how he <laughs> logically keeps things together. Yeah. Uh, dude, no, I know. It's it's literally this this quarantine did it to me, man. I yeah. have gone full caveman. Like, I really have. It. It's, it's, it's kind of funny just talking to people in general. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you go to the grocery store these days and it's just like someone's like, hey, can I cut in front of you? And you're like, dude, what are you doing, man? Just back up. No, okay. <laughs> but, like, but no, it can, uh, it can be like a lot, man. Um, yeah. No, Alexis and I have literally just completely um, hidden away from everything. Yeah, you guys, uh, are, just you become, guys are off the map. Where are you? Where did you go? Uh, dude, so I had my apartment in Valley Village for okay. a little bit and... Uh, and I was literally in there 24 seven. Like I yeah. was, I was literally like, it was so bad. I was like working out in there. I couldn't even go outside to work out yeah, because there. all my neighbors were like really weird about me working out in the yard. Even if oh, I wow. wore a mask. Yeah. I went to help Jake with a, an audition the one day and I came in and his house smelled like shit. Dude, it was disgusting. Yeah. It was completely really? horrible. <laughs> just like yeah, a I just, gym. I don't know. I was doing like a Wim Hof thing and getting used to my own smell. There it is. And, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I don't even know if that's a Wim Hof thing, but I'm making it. It sounds like it. It could be. If it's not, it should be. Yeah. If it's yeah, not breathing, just, it's smell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, it was just, it was so crazy, man. It's like, it's all I did. And then yeah. basically towards the end of the year, um, you know, my lease was coming up. My, my girlfriend has a house in uh, Joshua Tree and she was just basically like, you know, we need help on the land and stuff. Why don't you come hang out out here? And I was what like, is this, oh the God. 1900s? We need <laughs> yeah, help on dude, the land. No, <laughs> no <laughs> seriously, though. Come on, cowboy. Yeah. Ride your horse. And <laughs> yeah, seriously, though, man. Um, it was so crazy because they're doing like an Airbnb thing out here. So yeah. it's just like, it was so nuts coming out here because it was so much fun. It's like, I've never had so much fun just shoveling rocks and pulling That's shit crazy. out of the yeah. ground. Yeah. Uh, it's it's funny how much, because uh, you, you get so used to this, um, we get this... Uh, reward system now that's so yeah. digital you know what i mean yeah. and nothing's very you don't really get many physical rewards these days and so there's something about coming and working on the land and digging holes and putting things up and just being like oh man i get to see that like i woke yeah. up at 7 a.m did this and by the end of the day the job's done and there's something so rewarding about that wow um and it's been yeah man it's been like your my own little meditation being out here but it's been so nice you don't have to talk to anybody that's you crazy. know and who it's you do quiet. talk to are like the same five people they're yeah. great yep uh uh, yeah, man, it's it's, but yeah, I mean, that's why, man. I've just been crazy. completely gone. What a thing Dude, to pick I love up, it, though. though. I love, you know, it's funny. It's like everyone picked up different things during the pandemic. It was like, yeah, I picked up bread making. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I make I make pasta. <laughs> Jake's like, I dig holes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you put in those yeah. holes, Jake? Like, I can't tell you. It's like, dude. That's... Yeah, I'm just basically, I'm just basically following in Shia LaBeouf's footsteps. I was gonna say, I mean? I was gonna Jake, say, Jake's the new Shia LaBeouf. 
Dude, they, so they they have those uh, Airbnbs out there, but they're the the tents, right? Like uh, Alexis and oh, I really? built like those uh, oh, TVs. God, Is dude. that what they? It's been a it's been a fucking nightmare trying really? to get these tents because there's so much wind. So yeah. we'll set them up and they'll just get ripped to shreds. Like we put oh, up like God. three tents at this point, and I'm done. I'm How done. How windy with it. is it over there? Oh, dude, it gets bad. I mean, it's like uh, like I think last night we had like 30 miles per hour or something like that. Oh wow! Like it, yeah, yeah, it gets pretty brutal, man. Uh, you can't even like. I love going outside and taking a piss, and it's like you go outside and your piss just flies right it's back. back on you. It's just not even fun. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just there's nothing fun about it. Dude, uh, my only exposure to J Tree. So for people that don't know, like J Tree is a spot. Is it north? It's north of LA, right? And I'm pretty sure it um, might be. I don't know directions. I'm gonna just pretend it's, it's, yeah. it's somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth a Google. Is yeah. all I'm saying. Google it. yeah. It's called Joshua yeah. Tree, and I only know it as a place that people go and do psychedelics because there's like a lot of stars <laughs> yeah. there and desert, yeah. and it's supposed to be beautiful. I've never been there. What else is it? Is there anything else there? Or no. Like, what What do people do there besides that? I didn't know people live there. Well, it's actually pretty funny. Um, seeing how i don't know if gentrified is the right word but it's just kind of funny seeing what's changed you know yeah. what i mean because i've been coming up here since i was a kid with uh nolan stuff because he had his own sure. cabin and um and it's crazy because when you used to come up it really was just like four beautiful spots to stop in and then after the four beautiful stop stops it was like that's it like yeah. there's just kind of yeah. desert and you have yucca valley and 29 palms and obviously palm springs was like the real attraction yeah uh and then what's been happening and everyone in LA is like fucking off from LA. Like no one wants to be in LA. Like yeah. why, why do you move to LA if you are not like there it's for the industry right. and what's happening in LA Nothing. right now? Like, Nothing. you know what I mean? It's like yeah. now, now it's a little different because you know, we're obviously completely back. vaccinated. Yeah. Things are changing. Yeah. Things are changing. Yeah. But like all of last year, people were like, what am I doing? Like reevaluating their life. Yeah. And so all those people went to Joshua tree. And, uh, <laughs> and so it's kind of crazy now because now we got like these crazy farmers markets and you know, we got all these, also, like, it's starting to bring back some business. Oh dude, you can go get like wheatgrass shots and shit now. You know what <laughs> I mean? So There's like, LA. Oh my there's God. like Walmart, dude. Yeah. There's Walmart and Sonic, <laughs> and then there's like a, um, a high end Italian restaurant that just what? came out of the middle oh, of nowhere. Where on the street is they're building Equinox up there too. Oh my yeah. God, oh, dude, I, I wouldn't surprise be surprised if we had a Soul Cycle by the end yeah. of this summer. Like it's it's insane. Um, but it, that's you know I can't complain. It's pretty cool because you get the best of both worlds because you yeah. still get that uh, that sort of. Middle of nowhere, really cool, close community. And, and then it, you also can go get like your fruity shakes and stuff. Dude, yep. but it's beautiful. You know? Joshua Tree is so beautiful too because I, oh, I it's do. I, lo I love that big yeah. openness and like literally the stars, bro, are just mm -hmm. out of this world. No pun intended. I but like, yeah, they're just certain. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you have to go up there. I just remember, Jake, yeah. when we went up there uh, to Nolan's cabin right before Coachella, my first year going to Coachella. And oh, just dude. that was such a blast, man. Coachella. Yeah. It's gorgeous, dude. Yeah, man. Jake's I'm like, so into Jake's that basic went on a shit. Trip. He just went back on a trip through your brain of all the Coachella <laughs> memories. I saw it happen in real time. <laughs> That's just, so Raven. Well, yeah. There's just pockets of time you just start forgetting about, man. I tell you what. Like, uh, Connor and I were talking about it before we started. I mean, it's just like, that's the great thing about keeping up with old friends is yeah. they'll say something. You'll be like, oh, my God, I put that in a reserve part of my mind. Yep. And then it just takes you on a trip, man. Jesus Christ. I know. I know. <sighs> and also, I mean, this past year, it's just been a blur. You know, it's been a blur. Like, I, uh, oh, I, yeah. I, I was on the couch the other day. I don't know if I said this to you before, Connor, but I was on the couch. I, too, was on the couch the other day. That's Very nice. So maybe that's the same story. I was, too, guys. <laughs> so that's, and that's the story. No. So, you know how your phone will sometimes remind you of, like, one year ago today you were doing this? Uh, well, yeah, it yeah, says, yeah. one year ago today you were doing, and it showed me a picture of me, and I was wearing the exact same outfit in the exact same spot on the couch. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing changed, yeah. buddy. I felt like I, yeah. like I time-traveled a year. I maybe looked slightly worse, but otherwise... I was like, what happened this year? Like, yeah. where did it go? And Leave it, it to Siri me. to make you feel like a piece of shit. That's, that's, yeah. I'm she's, like, hey, Matt. She's, she's like, hey, Mike, you were a fat fuck last year. You're a fat yeah. fuck this year. Keep <laughs> it up, like, yeah. Come on, man. At least you're consistent. Oh my God. Imagine Siri mapped out all the progress in your life. It's like, all right, last year you were making this much money. This year you made this much money. It's like a flat line. Your weight. But oh one thing, so, so one thing that's interesting, I feel like the people that are starting to be, like become successful are all leaving LA. I think there's like a real counterculture movement against the land. The people that are coming here, doughy-eyed, are the ones that are like looking to start. And the ones that are like, fuck this, I'm out, are the ones I usually <laughs> want to be friends with. They're the ones that are it's, popping off. Man, it's so, uh, it's so tough because yeah. it's like, it's like 
part of me doesn't want to agree for the sake of some yeah. people's well-being and like part of me is also <laughs> like well um no i you know you know my my biggest thing about it is like it really depends in my opinion because like like i said i'm only acting in music so there's so many realms yeah. of it that yeah. i that i don't understand yeah. i don't get and then even the side of acting in music it's like my job has become 10 times easier you know what I mean? I literally yeah. just do self tapes wherever the hell. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. also why I wanted to be a nomad this year is because once I'm done helping here for the summer, I'm just going to go travel. I mean, that's just yeah, kind that's of awesome. like, I'm just going to go and you can just tape anywhere and you FaceTime tape. And it's like, you know, it's so crazy too. It's like, well, do tapes work? It's like, but yeah, I mean, there's yeah. plenty of, I have plenty of buddies booking tapes and doing zoom yep. meetings. And I mean, it's so for me, it's kind of like, I have no reason not to be going to live my life. Not, yep. you know, that was a big thing is I was just sitting in my apartment and it was like, um, not to get super real for a second, but no, like my real. biggest, Let's my biggest goal was like, you get your apartment, you know what I mean? You're early in your twenties, mm -hmm. you get your apartment, yeah. you get your place, you afford your place and you have the place you want. And so right. it's like, I was sitting there in the place I want, had everything I wanted in the place I wanted. And then I'm just like, ah, oh, shit. Is this yeah. it? Like, yeah. like, do I wake up, you know, read my books, work out, and then just, <laughs> is this oh, it? Like, is this, is this, day, baby. yeah, I'm like, is this life? Is this, you know, I might go hit up a good spot and eat some yeah. food and then hang yeah. out with my girlfriend. And it's just, I was just like, oh shit. Like, I don't want this this early now. You yeah. know what I mean? It's weird. Yeah. It's like, it's like everything you ever wanted. And then you're sitting there in it and you're like, ah. Maybe does I overcorrected. That, does, that, no. does, that, maybe, <laughs> does that get to the point where you're like, am I ever going to be satisfied kind of deal? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I think it's just human nature to never know if you're going to be satisfied. I think the most important thing is holding yourself accountable in what you think you want and what you really right. want in the moment. You know, yeah. it's like, um, I mean, it's it's look, I mean, every level of success is a staircase. You know, I, I feel like we all look at it kind of as a um, I, I don't know. I look at it as a staircase or like a ladder. Every single inch up is a huge success in itself, but that is not going to be the satisfaction satisfaction of, of success. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean, yeah, there's yeah. always yeah. going to be the next thing. It's like, once you get there, you're like, okay, what about this? Like everyone's so caught. I'm always saying like, well, once I have this, I'll be settled. It's yep. like, no, yeah. You, yeah. you won't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, that's okay. Like there's a yeah. lot of beauty in that. Like there's a lot, but, but I was kind of, I kind of hit that situation. I hit that situation where I was like, well, I have everything I've ever wanted right now. But tomorrow I'm going to want something different. Yep. You know what I mean? It's, and then the day after that, I'll probably want something different. And then two yeah. weeks down the road, I'll probably look back and be like, oh, man, maybe I should have kept this. Like, that's just life. Like, that's yeah. just, and you, you know just, what You mean? just got to be able to roll with those punches and realize that, like, no matter what situation you go, whether it's the left or the right, you're always going to be fine as long as you allow yourself to be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to li It's it's and it's kind of, it's a tough middle ground, right? Because you got to listen to yourself and be accountable and be true to yourself. You right. know what I mean? And, and everyone's got their own version of like true to yourself, but it, but nine times out of 10, and there's so much science behind this, what we feel and what happens to our body, you know, the physicality of our body and, yep. and depression, anxiety and all that, our yeah. brains are so, so powerful. Mm. You know what I mean? We truly yeah. do create not just the world in front of us, but what we feel inside. I mean, so many um, autoimmunity diseases are caused by stress yeah, and anxiety. Yep. And you know what I mean? Like we literally yeah. eat our own selves away. So it's like, you have to be honest on a deeper level than just like, well, I don't feel good today. It's like, but why do you not feel good? Mm, if you could yeah. really pinpoint yeah. it. And I know it's not easy for everybody. I mean, right. it's not easy for most people it's not even easy for me but it's like you have to start pinpointing what those things in life are that are genuinely stopping you it's like yeah. do you feel like you're in a rut in life because you're getting up and doing the same shit every day right. or are you in a rut in life because maybe you were supposed to go to the gym and you know secretly you're not going to the gym well, right that's, that's or, the thing like, too, or nine, just little little things or different things it's yeah. like i don't know the, the thing is too is like nine times out of the ten honestly the only thing that's stopping you realistically is yourself you're like not you know what i mean not to be almost cliche, every but time it's, almost yeah. every time it's it really is i mean that's what it is with yeah. me i know that's what it is with mikey mikey calling you out you know it's yeah. like that's, no, how, that's how it is with everybody no, it's, it's what it is with all of us man it's like you know before i got really into um reading like i i love psychology and, yeah. and before i got really into reading that stuff and and understanding the brain, it's like, that was the, the simplest thing my father ever taught me. He's like, everything in life is a choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, he's like, now can we choose for bad situations to happen to us? No, there's the yin, this yin and yang of life. He's like, but right. how you react to it, that is always a choice. Mm. Yeah. Like any decision you make is still a choice. Even if you don't feel yourself making the choice in the moment, you know what I mean? It's still a choice, you know? Yeah. And uh, he taught me that at a very young age and I always like kind of went with that. And yeah. then- from reading and stuff like that, you find it's like, not only is it choice, it's like 
this shit can really affect you if yeah. you don't listen to yourself. Like, it, it can really mess you up. For sure, it really compounds. Yeah, yeah, man. And I spent, yeah. like, and I think that was another thing being in my apartment is I spent so much time with myself. Yeah, nothing else to um, fucking do, bro, is you, four walls in your brain just looking around for dude, problems. Dude, it's just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, man. And it's like, you just get to a point where it's like, you can either be like, all right, fuck this dude, I don't want to know this stranger living with me, or you can be like, nah, it's time to sit at the table and eat with them. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yes, it, you either get that back and forth. Um, but, but yeah, and so we just uh, both kind of agreed. Both of the people in my head just agreed, like, <laughs> we need to get out of here. Jay, like, we need to. <laughs> yeah, have you, have you, because I know you do love reading. Have you read Matthew McConaughey's new book, Greenlights? Yeah, I heard Greenlights is awesome. I heard it's really good. How, yeah. how good is that book? Because yeah, a lot of like the, the traveling and stuff. Dude, I've read it yeah, twice. Yeah, when, he, when he goes to Australia, it was <laughs> freaking amazing. <laughs> the third lease. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know who's actually one of the memoirs I read that I, I really dug? Um, it was Michael J. Fox's? Um, yeah, I think it was called uh, uh, "No Time Like the Future." Oh, I think. Yeah. No way. Yeah. His, his was his was really good. Oh, like really, yeah. really, really good. Him yeah, just talking that. about like his his situation, what he's going through, and uh, and just yeah. like how he takes it in stride and everything yeah. like that. I mean, not to take away from McConaughey's. McConaughey's was sick, but also that yeah. one was. I'll just have to because really, I'm a massive. Really Back to the Future is my favorite movie, so I love yeah. Michael J. Fox. Dude, like it, it's just and he's just so. He's just so badass about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he's just like his that man's commentary. Been through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. His commentary on on uh on his on his um on his disease and everything like that is just fucking crazy. Like yeah. he's so cool. Yeah. He's so cool, man. And it, and you know, like you said, like green lights and ring stuff like that, it's like it's so interesting because we're all going on our own journey, but they're so parallel to every single human being. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that's what's mm -hmm. so interesting. It's like, I can never give you the answer on how you got to take your journey, yeah. but it's like, we all get it. And, and it's even like weird shit. It's like when like, I don't know, you'll be on Twitter sometimes and you'll be like, oh my God, when I was writing with my pencil, people thought the same shit too that yeah. I was thinking when I was yeah. writing with yeah. my pencil like that. <laughs> it's like, we all had the same childhood, but we didn't. It's like, we're all connected on such a deeper level. Like... Dude, that that's what's been crazy. I've been reading a uh, Hero with a Thousand Faces by uh, mm. uh, Joseph Campbell, and that's been nuts. Just talking about how like through our yeah, cultures and legend. psyche he's and so, stuff. That, that, Dude, I read that book. In, it's so good. Insane. It's so good. Insane. I yeah, love it so much. And like, it's just like we are so connected on such a deeper level. You know what's yep. so funny too is I was, I was such a cynic about this shit, and I was like, <laughs> when yeah. I was like younger, I'd be like, oh, we connected. Like oh, spiritual really? bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> <me too. I laughs> like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. I was like, oh, sick. Oh, okay. Great. Add your yeah. MySpace uh, later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but these days, I, man, that's all me. I'm just like, no, dude, you don't well, understand, dude. dude. I will say, like, I will say, man, living with you uh, for for that well, year and a half, dude. I, I just feel like I was constantly just getting straight therapy as soon as I walked so through the door, oh, which Jake's is good and bad. So good and bad. You just gotta face yeah. it, right? It's like <laughs> yeah, you rather yeah. go in your room and fucking not talk about it. Jake's like, let's talk about your problems, man. What's going on? Yeah. You're like, Jake, come on, man. There's, uh, there's, there's there's a couple things I want to comment on that you said, which I think is pretty interesting. I want to parse them down. So, yeah. so the first thing and it kind of ties into what we want to talk about today which is just in a way like we call it it was actually my girlfriend's term future tripping mm. right which is okay. the idea that we live out these futures um and mm. and live out what the future will be and hold for us rather than enjoying or working on the present Ooh, and right. yeah. it's, it's interesting one. because i mean you've said something that i think you know is is really the the crux of that conversation which is we live in a society where uh, it's built around like delayed gratification, right? Yeah. You yeah. you you start digging a hole. It's not going to be a hole until hours later. Like you become an actor, you front load so much of that work and effort and time, and there's no result for years. I mean, how long have you been doing this? Years and years and years. Yeah. If you're a producer, you're a writer. Like it can be. Th I've worked on projects for three years. I haven't made a cent off of them. And yeah, for anybody yeah. that works, you know, I mean, look, school, our school system. Like you will not make money until you go to college, and then now you need your master's, and then that's not. So mm -hmm. it's like everything that we do is is delayed gratification. So how can you enjoy the present when your future is promised to you so much brighter? And I think that you said it in a good way, where it's like you just have to understand what is in front of you is your reality. And you have to kind of shift that around and live with it and sit down at the table and face that and accept that because the future is no better than right now. The future doesn't even exist. It's not even right. there. It's not at the table yeah. with you. So it's like, if you try to just like, like live based off that, you're not going to get anywhere. So I, I think that's pretty resonant that you said that, you know? No, 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 no. I, no, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, um, and one amazing thing I was, I recently was, um, just learned about is your brain doesn't know the difference in the emotions. You know oh, wow. what I mean? I it's like, that. it's like if, if you're, if you're, um, having like, you ever had a hypothetical fight with someone in your head mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you're All just time. pissed 
Yeah. You're just pissed, yeah. right? Yeah. right? Your brain doesn't, that's why. Because your brain will serve real emotions to that. Your brain right. doesn't know the difference. It's it's wow. like, so that's why if we have a future in which we get anxious and we're like, wow. this, is, this isn't this is going to happen. I know this isn't going to happen. Like, yep. no, no, it's not just my future. It's just like, I feel it. It's not going to happen. And it doesn't end up happening. It's because you've put every fucking thing you could into making sure that doesn't happen without you not knowing. It, yeah. like it, it goes brain, beyond the man- manifestation aspect yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. And, and it's my thing is like i used to not believe in that shit like yeah. like 100 like take notes Mike. There, oh dude there was a dude there was a big time <laughs> there was a big time in my, my life where like um where you know i just got to the point where uh, with like certain projects and stuff where i was just like you know i'm not gonna get this i know i'm not gonna get this i know who they want blah yeah. blah blah and then i yeah. wouldn't get it and i'd be like see i'm fucking wow. right like yeah. you know what i mean and then it's yeah. like well yeah also maybe it's because you thought you weren't gonna get it you yeah. knew you weren't gonna get it and so yeah. that just happened maybe it wasn't because you were right maybe it's because you were doing everything in your power without you knowing it to not get it like or for it to not happen yeah. and the thing is though it's like that takes a certain level of accountability to hold yourself to that and realize, you know what, looking back on it, I probably could have been more optimistic or I probably could have done this. And it's like, and look, that's not fun. No. There's nothing fun about blaming yourself for shooting yourself in the foot. Like there's yeah. nothing fun about that shit. Like that sucks. Like, yeah. like when we've lived in a negative realm and it's so easy to be like, no, it's this, it's that, it's this around me. It's that around me. It's like, and again, I won't take away from the fact that like, are there shitty people out there? Yeah. Do shitty yeah. things <laughs> happen to good people? Absolutely. But it's also like, acknowledging that's the world what can you do to make your world a little better like what can you do to make your outcome a little better and i swear on my life the minute i started changing that shit the minute where i because i used to be like well i could get these roles but i could never get something like that right i mean i could never lead like a multi-million dollar franchise i couldn't do something like that just that's just not for me i'm just not like they don't want me for that it's like, well, then you're never going to get that. Yeah. But yeah. The minute you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I could. I could do whatever the hell I want. You know what I mean? It's like, boom. Then it starts yeah. showing up. And it's yeah. weird. Like, it, the light, your world does start changing. And it, it's weird because I get so, I don't mean to get so preachy and heady about this shit, but it's like, it's true. Like, no, it is very true. It's so true. And I was a diehard cynic, dude. I'd be like, people would be like, you know, like, I hated everything, astrology, all that bullshit, because I feel like people are just giving way too much shit to the universe and being like that. And I'm like, you know, people would be like, oh, I'm sorry. It's just the Sagittarius. That's why I'm being rude. It's like, no, you're just an asshole. It, it has like nothing to do with the fact that you're Sagittarius. Yeah, it's like you're just yeah. being a dick this yeah. week. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, and I still am kind of on the fence about that. Like, I heard plenty of people yeah. like, oh, sorry. I'm, I like, uh, I'm a Scorpio. Retrograde. Yeah. Retro- yeah, Mercury yeah, like, retrograde. Like, yeah, like, like, sorry Mercury I was a retro- bitch this week. Like, I'm a Scorpio and it's Scorpio's <laughs> pissed week. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, no, yeah, you're yeah, just a bitch. Man. Like, there's, I was like, nothing. No, like, but, but, but all I'm getting at is like, jokes aside, it's like, you know, I, I think, I believe that shit's real. Like, that, that's yeah. a that's a legit thing you know what i mean it's like uh right, it's right, like right. Manif- manifestations morty like it's right. it's a real thing all right ready ghosts real or not real uh re- real yeah aliens Same. hit me hit me come on jake uh, come on dude real 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 i don't, yeah, jake. Real. I don't, fuck, I don't Mike, know you should though compare I don't... me and jake's answers because all right connor, connor, right connor the... are you on the same one connor are you also on real and real Connor loves uh, ghosts. He loves them. We've talked about this. Connor, believe in ghosts, believe in aliens. Yes. And law, yes. Law of attraction. Real. Yeah, that's, that's real. Yeah. 100% that's real. Yeah. real. All right. All right. Um, uh, multi level marketing. <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real. <laughs> I think that's the only thing. What a, uh, yeah, there's Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster. They're all real. I believe in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-level marketing? No. <laughs> See, I don't. I don't know. That's that's the weird thing, though. It's like when it comes to creatures like that. I don't know. I think bullshit. Like Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot. Really? I think bullshit. Wow. Yeah, aliens. It makes more sense to me because there's multiple galaxies out there. You know, you know what I mean. Right. Have yeah. aliens come here? I don't know. But do you do believe other, that does other life here? exist? I maybe, probably. I don't know. Do you believe I, they like, are you here, know, Jake? Do I believe they are here? Like already, like, or they're <laughs> right on their now. way? <laughs> Uh, Come on! I don't know. I've met some weird fucking people. Yeah, um, they're Palm Springs. No, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're all in Joshua Tree, bro. Yeah. Everyone thinks we're yeah. doing psychedelics out here. Yeah. We're actually yeah. just having alien yeah. meetings. This Wait. is like you know the like you know the first Men in Black when they're in the desert and all that yeah. shit's going yeah. down. That's Joshua Tree. That's I'm telling Joshua you. Tree. Dude, did you guys hear that there was something called the Josh fight? By the way, and it was either yeah. in Palm Springs or Joshua Tree, and they Wait, got what all. Was it? 
they got every person. It started out as a joke, but what it turned yeah. into was like an Area 51 level movement, essentially on Facebook, where everybody joined, and it was all the Joshuas met up in either J, J- Tree or <laughs> Palm Springs for a fight club to see who the one true Joshua is. Oh, well, in my this, in this, like. I think like this little kid Josh won. Yeah, he was like this, like like yeah, it was like a kid. It was like a kid. My boys got bragging rights all throughout middle school and high school now. Because nobody's gonna (laughs) hit. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? That's that's something. That's something you would do. I feel like that's a real Jake move. It's just a real like maverick. I'm going for it. I'm showing up. Dude, I totally fight a kid. One (laughs) hundred (laughs) percent. And I'd win too, dude. I'd win. Me and a bunch of six year olds done. And here's the thing. Jake would brag about it too. Oh, Oh, dude. Rock done. It done, would be, it done. Would be all the people that would be unwilling to fight the kid, and like the kid would be winning, and Jake would be like, "Hold oh, no, on, no. there's one more. There's one more." Screw the Ben Askren, Jake Paul uh, situation. Yeah. Jake Walker versus a thousand <laughs> six year olds. I would take them out. TMZ yeah. goes. Jake Walker beats up a six year old. Yeah. These Boy, hands are rated E for everyone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I stole good PR. that. I'm it's not good. that funny. It's good. It's good PR for for the movie. By the way, I want to talk about yeah. talking about kids. Yeah. yeah. Did you play an so, yeah, 12 so, I, Mighty I know, Orphans. I know Todd, the producer. I met him before. I saw his play. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. When I saw that you were doing one of his movies, I was just like, this is probably going to be incredible. So I saw the trailer. I was blown away. And uh, oh, I'm sure thanks, it was an awesome yeah, it experience. Looks, it man. looks amazing. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, man, we we had a we had a fun time. And movies just about me beating up twelve orphans. It's really it's, <laughs> nothing's it's awesome. changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> no, no uh, filmed in no, Joshua Tree. <laughs> yeah. No, man, it's it's a it was a really really good time, man. Um, and uh, we you know we yeah. did the hits. We really went in. We yeah. we played ball, and I still don't know shit about football. <laughs> uh, well, what was so funny is you think like you're doing it, and you think, oh man, I'm gonna learn so much shit yeah and uh and it turns out it's all football in the 30s so all of it's kind of irrelevant to yeah. football today <laughs> anyways like and the whole point of the movie is that this coach you know was was fundamental to like the to the um, new offense and throwing and all this sure. stuff because they played very rugby style and all this right. so it's like it was so funny funny learning all this because you know we were being taught our uh, coach tj that's his name is Fucking awesome dude, handlebar mustache and shit. Oh, I love it. And, so uh, Texas, and he talk like this, you know. Like he literally, yeah, he's the coolest dude ever. And uh, and he would just be like, he'd be like, and this is probably the closest to what you guys are doing. And it's still shit from like the seventies and the sixties oh and the fifties. Like you know what I mean? It was yeah. it, it was just it was hard to reference because you right. know really you only had um you I mean the closest thing we had to reference that even like was remotely like a film was um. Leatherheads, right? Like that was yeah. the closest thing yeah. they'd be like, and that was a, that was kind of a, a satire on the whole thing. Yep. So it was like, um, so it was nuts actually trying like learning that form of football because the way you're supposed to catch the ball is not how they catch the ball today. Like you're not catching that ball like a big catch in the air like that. Right. You're not like you know what I mean. Like you're not like super stiff farming and yeah. doing like all yeah. that stuff. It's like so many things were just starting then, you know. So it's like you and it was you know what's so crazy about filming is like. Some things weren't invented till much later. Like we, you weren't pounding fists and high fiving and like, yeah, we did it and like coming in together. Right. Like, it was slap very much on the like, ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That was there. No, it was always a slap on the ass. You know, it, it was completely fine to make out in between, you know, uh, uh, huddles and stuff. Like, you know, that was fine. That That's was normal. completely normal. normal. Yeah. yeah. Um. It was more just like it, it was, but it was so crazy. You know what I mean? Like you couldn't yeah. like fist bump and you couldn't yeah. like it was so weird not high fiving and, yeah. and stuff like that and like. Like there were really weird things like thumbs up and stuff. Like there's so many things you had to think about. Like oh, they didn't do that during that time, you know? Which how is just how insane. authentic was like the equipment that you guys were wearing? Was did they make it like? Oh, completely and entirely authentic. Like everything we wow. used was not like um, it wasn't made for the ground up. I mean, it was old gear. Like actually, funny enough, the gear we used was the gear from Leatherheads. Oh wow! Uh, hey, wow! Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, it was brutal though, running in those like fake cleats. That, well, not fake cleats, but those old timey cleats and stuff like that. Like, I, I mean, bet, it, dude. it was very easy easy to get into um, the idea of feeling like a poor, uh, scavenged orphan finding like the <laughs> stuff to wear and everything. You know, because like, because I mean, we we were like everything I was wearing were like old school stuff. So when you were doing some of those hits, like you were just like, oh shit. Like, so, you know, I know, you know, Jake, I, know I know you're super like. Um, you're super method. So, how was living in an <laughs> orphanage for uh, a couple <laughs> of months out of the year? Huh? <laughs> uh, it was it was cool. I, it was kind of awkward having to take one of their beds. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it was really cool, man. It was uh, it was great. Um, 
you know, and they treated me just like everyone else. You know, right. they, uh, you know, I had to, <laughs> I had to I do imagine, everything just like everybody. I imagine very Queen's Gambit, just Jake and the Queen's <laughs> Gambit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a lot of fighting six year olds. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Jake, no, Josh but, uh, stuff. It was actually really, it was really fun though because, um, all jokes aside, you know, they wanted all the boys to always stay together. So we were yeah. always oh, staying cool. at the same hotel on the same floor. We were always right. hanging out with each other. Uh, we still have a group trap till this day. Um, that's cool. It was just nuts because we're all from completely different walks of life. You know what I yeah, mean? Like man. Uh, some of them were local and grew up by each other and some weren't. And um, it was really cool. And they're all really, really sweet guys. Uh, so um, what, what was, um? How, how did you... Did they like kind of find you? Did you audition for that? Like, did you know about the project beforehand? Dude, it was actually a super funny situation because basically, because you know what was so funny is Luke and I did Stargirl together for six yeah. months. Like, right. so he was in he was in Stargirl, and uh, and we didn't really have any scenes together besides like one scene where we don't really say any dialogue to each other, and uh, and we always were very cordial on set and hi, what's up, and just talked yeah. and chat. He's a super super nice guy, and then um. And then basically what was happened was actually my two co-stars, Cameron and Hunter, were auditioning for this thing. And um, they're just like, yeah, he's kind of like a hard-hitting football player. It's in the South, da 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 and, uh, and we're going out for it. And I was just kind of like, why the fuck am I not going out for that? Like, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't make any, that doesn't make yeah. any sense. And they, and they were like, they're also talking to Luke. They're like, because Luke was already attached. So they were just kind of like, yeah, they're like, Luke, give us a good word and stuff like that. And I was just going, and you're like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, all right, cool, sick. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, but basically what happened is um, I wrapped up Stargirl September 9th and I went back and I was staying with my dad before I was about to get my uh, apartment. And uh, in between that time, I did this independent film called Butter. Um, oh, you did that with, uh, with Jack. I did that with Griffo, yeah. And so I did an independent film uh, way before Stargirl. And that's also uh, Jay Todd. He's the same producer on it. Right. And so and so, what happened was, um, was long story short, uh, connections started happening and people were talking. They're like, oh, have you uh, seen like this guy that we hired from... Um, from Butter uh, as Jake and and the team for Twelve My Orphans was like, no, we haven't. And so they called me in, um, and it was one of those where like went really well. And the minute like we actually got to know each other, they were sweethearts. They were just like, oh, what's right. up? Blah, blah. Yeah. And then get out of there. And I'm literally, um, oh, this is a crazy thing. We'll talk about affirmation and stuff. Uh, in the way of the audition, I there are two Texas light license plates in front of me. Oh wow! Uh, the entire ride there, I get out of the car and someone puts something on like my car, like hands me a card, and it's from Texas. It's like some sort of like Texas. It's like wow. it's called like Texas Texas Wash or something. Some something to do with like cars. And the guy was from Texas. Wow. I'm getting into the elevator and someone's wearing a Texas University sweater, like or like a Texas like a college Texas Shut sweater, up. like Texas Cowboys or something like that. Like the Cowboys, like I'm not good with this crap, but it was like something Texas on sweater, right? And then I get off the. Car Car and I get in my car and I turn it on and it's something about like and I don't listen to sports or anything you guys know this it's something about the Dallas Cowboys and I was just like this is fucking weird wow. like this is so much shit. That and then universe, that bro. dude and then that night I'm like on the freeway and like um, you just know when you get a call from your reps you're like oh that's the call like something yep. happened that's yep. the call yep. you know mm -hmm. they're either dropping me or I got something yeah. so it's like <laughs> so uh, so you know what I mean they, yeah. they pick it up and they're like you got it and I was just like oh this is crazy they're like yeah you gotta leave to Texas in two days and I was just like what well dude <laughs> I like, remember wow. I remember like, you got back from Stargirl and I was like oh Jake can't wait to see you. you're like actually sorry buddy gotta go. I gotta go to Texas for, six, yeah. for another six weeks dude and it was crazy and then it's like and then Luke and I really hit it off because um, we had to like obviously and that was really funny because the first day of practice he's there and he's just like you just can't get away from me can you you know <laughs> uh, but um, but no man it was, it was a really really good time though uh, it's crazy how it all happened though it's so crazy how life works in a sense right because the movie was supposed to obviously come out in 2020 and then the pandemic yeah. happened and everything but now it's almost more of a blessing in disguise and i mean not the pandemic but yeah. you know but right. but just the idea that everything got pushed because it's like it's like you know it's fucking crazy it's i've always wanted a film to go to tribeca and like we're our movie's gonna be Is it going at to tribeca, tribeca? Oh, wow. no way yeah it's man. at Congrats. Dude, wow. yeah it's fucking like wow. it's like our movie's at at the gonna be at the tribeca film festival and, it, and it's like and it's it's just crazy to think of that and it's also crazy to think like you know i didn't know when the next time we'd even be able to have a premiere or anything like that but it's like we're gonna be yeah. able to have a premiere in wow. texas and it's going to be playing in theaters across Oh, like, you is. know what I mean? Yeah, it's going to be in theaters. Because like, I remember there were talks of Netflix and stuff, possibly. Yeah, no, no. Once 
Sony Pictures Classic acquired it. It's going to like New York, and like New York is where it's That's premiering. Huge. Actually, wow. at That's Tribeca, huge. it's premiering there, and it's gonna. Wow. Like, but it's just, it's crazy. Like, that's such a crazy wow. thing to think yes. about. It's like, it's like, we always were proud of it. Like, we were proud of what we did. You know what I yeah. mean? And like, and, uh, and I've been lucky enough to see a decent amount of it. And like, I'm super proud of it. And, yeah. um, and it's, it's just like, it's crazy though. Just sometimes how stuff works out like that. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think, I think the man. same with like Stargirl with like the, during the pandemic and stuff like that. It's like, since everyone was at home and streaming and everything, it's like, it kind of, the format in which they released it and everything worked out better and all sorts of things. So it's like. I don't know, man. Everything's a blessing in disguise. I feel like it's only when you look at it in a bad way, it's going to be bad. Like, you know what I mean? I I will say, too, along with that whole, like, once you're going in stride, the world just seems like it starts working for you. It's like, you know, Mike, you you, like when you're in a higher frequency, I like how I like to put it. If you're in a higher frequency, higher frequency, things starts to fluctuate towards you, you know? And that's when... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Dive in. Well, well, yeah. And I was just... uh, you know, I guess that what was so crazy about 2019, because I've been doing this since I was 10. So yeah, like, you have. You're like, yeah, you've been, since you've been I was LA, a kid. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, been. yeah, yeah, man. I, well, yeah, from 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 a farm in Mississippi, like to the like, kind of middle of nowhere Mississippi to LA and to Joshua dude, Tree, it, it, yeah. to, to Joshua Tree. Yeah, full <laughs> full circle. Um, but uh, but no, it's it's just kind of crazy, you know what I mean? Because I started and I was a much more heavier set kid when I started, and like I didn't really like shoot out or lose my weight till I was like 14, 15. and so I expected to have this career of just being the funny heavy set kid, you know what I mean? Right. And I was cool with that. Like I, my parents were amazing, and they're very like, they're like, you can be whatever you want to be. Don't let like, you know, they're just very like real. Like there are yeah. mean people out there, and people are always going to be mean. You can choose to let them get you down, or you can choose to do your own thing. It's like I was always lucky. Like I was always like a really confident, like you know, heavy set kid and everything. It's like, what do I come up from? boiling crying crap like that's like yeah it's a part of life you know what i mean um and i and i hope we can like find a way to like figure that out so it's not always some shit people have to go through but it's like um it was just part of life and it's like would i go back and take that away and be like oh i wish kids never bullied no because it made me who i am today so it's like it's something i would never take away uh it's not something i'd personally want my kids to go through necessarily i'd I'd like better ways for them to build character but um but but th- that being said, it's like, that's what I thought my career was going to be. It was going to be like, kind of just like always being the comedic relief, the blah, 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 blah. Um, and so, and so I was lucky enough to do like a, a good amount of work when I was a little kid and then like 14, 15 hit and I did rectify for like five years. And, and that was a crazy realization, right? Like, Cause that's something I realized really, really young was this sort of thing. It's like, oh my God, well I'm acting and making a living off mm. acting, but there's no, um, how do you say like there was not the fame of it there was not like that yeah. it was like it was such a crazy thing cuz it's like right. at 14 i realized yeah. like you can make a living off this and this be your job and you live comfortably and no one know who you are right, right? and it's sure. like and that at a very young age made me realize like well i guess i'm not doing it for people to know who i am cuz i still love doing it but it's yeah. like you know what That's i mean so it's cool, like you're actually. doing it's like you're honest that. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like I'm literally on a series. Like I have a show. It's on Sunday at MC. It's like you know, it's like so many people love it. It's awesome. Like yeah. I'm super, and it's like real hardcore acting. It's like they didn't yep. let you fuck around on that show. Like you had yep. to show up and be ready. You know what I mean? And it, it was crazy because it was such a whirlwind of emotions. Because I'm like, well, I'm doing it. Like why? Why else did I do this? It was to make money doing this and live off this. And I am yeah. literally living off of it. It's what I'm doing. But I'm not like going to all these premieres and doing all this shit and like being. It's like. And it was such a crazy realization. And now it's cool being in my 20s and doing stuff that's kind of more in the limelight and stuff, mm-hmm. but being able to handle it better. Because yeah. I'm just not saying I'm by any means like some big celebrity or anything, but I'm saying yeah, like just God, being, able to, <laughs> being able to, <laughs> to like handle it better because yeah. you come to realize it's like, what do you want from this? Like, do you want to make a so living? Here's, here's my question. I got to interrupt because I'm really curious. Yeah, what is yeah, it yeah. then? Because it, it's not the money. Like, sure, it's nice. Yeah. And, like, sure, you get to live off of art now which is amazing yeah but like what is it that it satiates inside of you like why 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 act why do all of this why choose such a hard career with so many tough blows like what is it fulfilling for you because i don't really know many things where i'm so comfortable like i'm as comfortable as swimming in water man it's like The cameras are on. I'm just like, this is fucking like, I never yeah. feel more relaxed than I do right. when the cameras are on. You know, because so much of no. the only time you act is in between action and cut. Everything yeah. else isn't acting. You know what I mean? That's the funniest part. It's like so much of acting isn't acting, you know? So it's like, and it's also, it's just like, dude, like, I never thought I got get to do superhero shit and kill zombies and do it. It's, yeah. like, it's like literally my job could be different anytime I do it. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's nothing else out there like that. 
And it's also just like, I've been, I guess my other thing too is like, is I be doing that version of myself a disservice. Like if that little kid knew what he was going to eventually be able to do and work on and that, and he knew that I stopped, yeah. like I was just like, nah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It'd be kind of like a fuck you to that kid. Cause it's like, yeah. My the version of me I did I never knew I'd do any of this stuff. I didn't even yeah. think I, I w- didn't think I was going to be the guy that could even be considered for that type of shit. Right. Um, and so like now it's like it's just it's hard not to it's like hard to say why would I do anything else? You know what I mean? It's right. like it's like I and is it difficult? It's like do you do you occasionally be like oh my god why am I doing this? Do I even like this anymore? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Do you do these auditions and you're just like what is this? Like I mean look it's it's an uphill battle but it's like you know three three bad years can be saved by one really good year. Uh, like, yeah. so it's like, you know, yeah. it's kind of, it's just like, and bad is relative. Like this is, you know, so it's, so I don't know, man. It's like, I mean, I think that's a great question. It's like, why? And the answer to why is always changing. It's for me too, man. Changing. It's always, and it's, it's at first I was scared by that, you know, because for producers, yeah. it's like, you don't do this for the spotlight, right? Nobody right. really cares about producers. There's a couple of people that are like big names, but you're, I'm not doing sure, it for sure. fame. You're doing it because you want to tell stories. You love telling stories. Exactly. And I couldn't see myself doing anything else, but I definitely had times like, or weeks or months or whatever, where things just don't make progress. And you're like, fuck, like if I'm not making things, why am I doing this? I can make yeah. a livable wage, but like why? And the difference is you care. Yeah. Yeah. That's you it. care. It's all you know? it is. Yeah. It's all it is. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think like, I think that's a, that's an end game. Any person can get behind. My thing is like, I would love to get to the point where it's like, um, not comedy, but like a happy Madison situation where me and my friends are just doing work and like, yeah. you know, like, like, you know, Seth Rowe and Adam, they can just like write love something yep. and then just and do up. it. You know yep. what I mean? It's like, I want that sort of goodwill hunting Freedom. situation where it's like you and your boys get together write a script and studio is going to approve it Boom. because you guys approved yourself it's like once you get to that point where you're just like that's yeah. all i'm going that's it that's that's what full i creative want to freedom. do full creative yeah. freedom creative full creative freedom man it's like full creative freedom yeah. and finding a way to merge music and acting in ways that i love and doing it in, in a way that i really love doing it that would make sense for me like those are like that's like well, literally the top thing while we're on that topic then let's talk a little bit about your music then what what is what inspired you to really start diving because i know you started off with acting correct and so yeah yeah, well yes yeah 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 well i started i started off with acting and you know i'd always sing like my entire life and um and basically it just kind of came down to you know we we tried working with some of these producers and they're all just kind of like assholes like i don't know how else to put it like they're just like yeah we can do a song for you for like ten thousand dollars and the song was just like and then by the end of it it's not even what you wanted it's also just dog shit i'm just like what like you know it's like look can i make anything better no but i can at least be like that's that (laughs) shit like you know what i mean it's like well that's 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 what's so funny it's like it's like you don't have to make movies to watch a movie and be like that's a shitty thing like you know what i mean it's like it's like it's like you don't have to be the master of that to also objectively be like i don't like that and i know exactly it's subjective so maybe they think it's great but it's like you know there's so much crap i was like god i just don't like this like like you're charging me ten thousand dollars a session and it's like what are we making some bubblegum crap in here (laughs) like you know what i mean like i can't i can't do this and then basically like what happened was you know, through connections with my father and stuff, I met this producer uh, named Jim Roach, and um, and we just really hit it off, man. And it was awesome. just one of the coolest things ever. We're still working together today, and it's just one of those things where, like, every song I've done, he's produced, and um, and it, I mean, it just worked. You know, that's one yeah. thing I've come to realize in life. It's like sometimes things just work, and if they just work, you should probably hold on to them. You know what I mean? Like people get so confused when they're like, ah, I don't know. It's like, why is this too perfect? It's like, cause things can just be perfect. That's okay. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like, we have this like huge thing in our minds. They're like, oh, it's working out too well. Something's going to happen. It's like, no, no, maybe it can just be great. And that's fine. Like, and, you know what I mean? And that's what I like a lot about you, Jake, because, and I feel like this can really help a lot of people too, is you're just a go with the flow kind of guy. And I feel like if you just really dive into that and just allow yourself to morph you know, life just works out and it's easier and there's less stress. And I feel like that's why you're so successful, quote unquote, because you allow yourself to adapt to any situation and, um, and you just, you know, how to, you know, how to adapt to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I try my best. I, I think I appreciate that. And I think, yeah. I think as I've gotten older, it's become easier um, but like I said, I was not always like this. Sure. I'm still continually trying to be, uh, 
more in that world of just like letting things happen. But uh, so much of it yeah, is a dialogue I mean, too. It's so much yeah, of it is a dialogue. Man, it's like constantly absolutely. with yourself. It's like, dude, con- well, no, well, I guess that's my biggest thing is like, as long as there's some sort of capability to grow and action to take that, you know what I mean? It's like, as long as you know, you can keep growing in some aspect. you know, uh, not trying to stay stagnant in too many ways. It's not always like, you know, oh, I got to prove myself in my art or do this and that. It's just little things. It's just like 100%. being accountability, man. It's, it's yep. just like, you know, it's, um, it, it, one of my favorite things was actually like, uh, I can't remember the name of this book, but I, I read this book. It was talking about, it's like, you know, if you're in a conversation, you don't know something. Don't pretend like you know something. Yeah. yeah. Just say, I don't know what you're talking about yeah. and ask someone to explain it. And it's like, and that was a huge step forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like kind of letting that guard down of like ex- people expecting you to know everything all the fucking time. You're letting like, go okay. of your ego in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just straight up being like, no, I just want to get better. I want to better yeah. myself any way I can. Let's figure this out. You know what I mean? Cause, Cause I was so Dude, I was so self assured in my teenage years, and I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm twenty, basically twenty four in like three weeks. So it's like, you know, I'm not too deep in my twenties, but it's like, it's I can look back at my teenage years and, and confidently say, my teenage years, I was a little more like, oh, I got, it. Like, what, <laughs> you know, what the fuck do these people know? I yeah, got it. you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's like the minute you cut that shit out. You're like opening yourself up to so much more. Like, in, uh, and you know, it's crazy. Connor and I are taking bets on our most successful friends. So. uh you're uh, you're you're in the running right now. Yeah. You're you're, you're, oh, you're, doing, you're doing you're doing pretty right. you're doing I'm pretty doing. good, but we're wait, we're waiting to see what happens. Yeah, my my money's on Jake. Speaking of money, uh, guys, we got to get paid, so we're gonna take this moment to uh, take a little uh, sponsor sponsored break. break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, Connor. <sighs> what, Mikey? How am I smelling today? Be honest. Right. <laughs> Not good, bro. Not good. Not Psych- good. I can tell you've been using our, our sponsor. Is this true, bro? You smell great. Dr. Squatch comes in handy. Look at this. I'm smelling pretty good. <laughs> bro, you smell awesome, dude. You smell like a lavender breeze. That's amazing, dude. I can tell you've been using their monthly surprise. You know what, dude? Now I just start. I put a little wick in it. I just burned it like candles. It's just <laughs> oh the best. God, that's amazing, dude. Did I don't you- even shower anymore. I just burned some Dr. Squatch in the room like incense, and it's can- great. Do you mind if I ask, where did you find that link? So here's the thing. If you take the time, you can find it in the bio of our videos. Go click the bio, find the little link, click it. What are you going to get off of 15% or so? 15% off of all these Boom. natural Boom. body wops. Body wops? What am I? <laughs> Cardi B? <laughs> <laughs> get your Dr. Squatch today. Get your Dr. Squatch. Click the link. And we are back with our maybe most successful friend, Jake Austin Walker. I'll take the maybe. I'll take the maybe. He's That's in the, fine. He's in the big, running. That's fine. Juicy maybe. I'm the captain of maybes, so we're killing it. <laughs> so actually, I want to talk about my my introduction to you, Jake. Okay. Uh, okay. So I used to live in Jersey, and okay. I was uh, in, a, in, a, in a sleepy little town called Marlboro. And I would get yep. sent these videos from Matt once in a while, my roommate, my best friend. Or one yeah. of them. Sorry, Connor. Well, yeah, I was, I was, and, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, and they would always be like really talented people. And Matt would be like, dude, come out to LA. And he would just send me a video of someone. And I got sent a video of someone on stage with these beautiful red locks. And oh, God. he was playing a, a little ditty called Magnolia. And oh. I, I listened to the video. I'm like, wow, this is really good. I like, th- I got to go out to LA. And one of my first days in LA, I came and everyone's like, hey, we're having a bonfire. And I was like, all right, I'm coming. Oh, and it was my literally my oh. first, I think it was my first night in LA. And I came and it was underneath the stars. We snuck down in Malibu over all these rocks. I had my guitar. Yeah. I was also like 60 pounds heavier. I was not built for the rocks. And I'm oh. like going down, almost falling. And I get to the bottom and it opens up to all these stars and this fire that we make. It's like beautiful, picturesque LA. And I'm like, I should have been here my whole life. You have like beautiful girls, you have the fire, the stars. And then I hear this hummingbird of a voice calling to me, <laughs> calling to me from yeah. the ether. And I look over across the fire and it's Jake Austin Walker, that that beautiful redheaded man playing his guitar and oh singing what I believe to be Magnolia. And I'm like, Matt, this is it, dude. This is the moment. <laughs> I'm hearing Jake Austin Walker play. And he's like, Mikey, yeah. get ready, baby. This is top five best moments of your life. And he was not wrong. <laughs> 
and that was my intro to Jake, man. Oh I was my like, god, dude. Dude, I will say, man, I really fucking miss those Malibu bonfires. Oh Jake. yeah, I, I truly like. We would we would just get a whole. I group miss of Malibu people. and the bonfire, not the people. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't miss. Yeah, honestly, I just don't miss trash. people at all. <laughs> no, no, me too, man. I. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I miss a lot of those. Get to, that's why I love it out here so much. Is yeah. because we fucking have well, dude. I told you I'm due for a little J Tree adventure. You are, man. You are. You are due for somewhere in J Tree. <laughs> <It's not laughs> okay. You're welcome anywhere, but here's a whole nah. desert. There's a whole desert for you. They had a sense like of magic to it. I know, man. Well, it's like if we're talking also about future tripping, dude. I do this whole thing where it's like past tripping, right? And it's like the yeah. nostalgia that I'll get looking back. I'm almost at times, and maybe this is like my little woe for the week, but like at times I find myself <laughs> caught between future and past mm, where it's like, yeah. fuck, dude, the past was so good. And it's like, oh my God, the future is going to be amazing. And I'm in the present. I'm like, this sucks. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> get me out of here. I feel like, the, <laughs> but then I'm in the past. And I'm like, this sucks too. And I'm in the future. And like, this also sucks. <laughs> so it's yeah, like, maybe it's like just, you got a whole bunch of hoopla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or maybe you're just spreading yourself so thin you can't enjoy yourself in the present. That's you know exactly what I mean? That's exactly what Party it is. Parties live in the past. Parties live in the future, man. I know. No, you can't it, stay grounded enough, dude. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like it's like we're creatures of comparison, which is the worst thing for us. So it's like, and it, and it can be like to the future, the past, yeah. the people, the things. Like, and so, you know, your future self is always going to be better than you are. And your past yeah. self is always worse than you are now. And it's yeah. like, it's always this like revolving door of... You know, bullshit. Jake uh, Austin <laughs> Walker. Uh, <laughs> do you guys but, do you guys set you know. goals for yourself? By the way, I'm curious. Like, I, oh I, I'm yeah, s- dude, whiteboard yeah. goals. Oh, do you do it? You visualize. Yeah. You because how do you not like? How do you stay yeah. grounded in the present if you're always making goals for the future? Like, how do you how do you manage that? Well, because I don't really make goals for the future in the sense of um, how do you, how do you how do you say? Yeah, the, I mean, it's it's more it's just like I like to do things that are relatively accomplishable. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you wake up, you make your bed, you know, yeah. you eat clean, you work out, you read. Yeah. Um, you but know. I also feel like whenever you plan for those futuristic like goals that you have, you make them matter of fact instead of you, being you do, like, I want this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess I'm kind of an ignorant ass for saying I don't make goals in the future because everything is the future. But like, <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's like I don't stand on those goals so hard. Like, it's like... You don't need them. You know, if... You need them as much as you don't need them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a conundrum. Like, it's great to have it, know in the back of your head and look at the affirmations and think, and it's like, yeah, and I, you know, I, I do the, you know, I take like 15 to 20 minutes a day and just sit outside and go through each thing and just think on it and try to yeah. visualize it and stuff because I have so much time in my hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, no, but no, I do. And, I, and I, I think that stuff's important, but I also think it's very important to let go of how you expect to get there. Wow. You know, yeah. I think I think everyone's so wow. caught up. It's like, here's the goal, and this is the exact road it's gonna happen. It's like, well, you don't know that. You just mm-hmm. hold on to the goal, but don't get so caught up on exactly how you're gonna get there. Because I think that can like really mess people up. Huh. It's like, well, it didn't it, go this way. It's like, but that doesn't mean you're not getting there. It just it didn't go that way. That's a form of the mental way. block. Yeah, that's a form of the mental it's block. A great it's point. Like, well, I can't get to this goal if I'm not taking this exact path. And it's like, well, right. what's the point though? The point is the goal. The point is the end of the road. The end. Right. That's where you're getting to. So why does it matter if you take the bumpy road or the easy road or the river? Like, Mm -hmm. why does any of that matter? At least you're getting there. And I think people get a little too caught up, even me myself, too caught up in like how I'm going to exactly get there compared to it's like, well, the only matter thing that matters is you getting there. That's it. Right. You know, Um, so I think that's that's kind of like if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. I think it's I mean, it's it's so funny. Like we also. Because we, our narrative is is twenty four seven us, right? Like all yeah, we right. see is a hundred percent of us all the time. It's like right. time yeah, gets all con- the time. It's all and it's sickening, and t- time gets <laughs> it gets conflated, right? Where you're like, fuck, I had a rough week where nothing happened. Well, dude, if so, if Jake came to me next week and be like, dude, I just booked a huge movie, I'd be like, dude, already, I just saw you, and he'd be yeah, like, yeah, sure, dude, sure. for me, it's been one hundred ninety two sure. excruciating hours. So <laughs> sure, it's like, we, sure, we sure. have to remember, man, that that path is just like, we, it, I guess it's a level of compassion and and, and understanding well, yeah, for ourselves. Yeah. yeah, it's compassion. It's also it's like I said, it's like not living in comparison. Yeah, you know I was what about I mean. It's well. like it's yep. like it's like it's like the comparison is is the devil, man. I mean, when it's also it's just like I used to have this whole thing. It's like, well, if I'm not at the top yet, then I mean, I'm that's my spot taken. It's like well, there's, it's uh, yeah. the limitless. 
the you know what I mean? It's like there is no there is no spot at the top. There is no if they're doing this, then like I'm screwed. Or it's like I you know I used to get really caught up. It's like oh, I've been doing this for years. This person came out in three years and they're on yep. a show. They're doing this. It's like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not like casting's going. Oh yeah, we're definitely making sure they're going to be successful. <laughs> and you're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I that's think- not. That's not how it works, man. Everyone's got a job to do and everyone's doing it. It's like I, you just keep your head down think, and do your shit. I think shit. sometimes like, I worry that I miss my time, if that makes sense. Like, I think everyone worries that they miss yeah. their time. Yeah. And I think I think there's like a good you know, you know, um George St. Pierre actually had like a really good like um I saw this some clip. I think it was with uh I think I think he was on like Rogan or something. Rogan, I, I think, yeah. I I I saw a George uh, St. Pierre clip and he had a great thing of like he's like he's like, you know, fighters get mad at me, but like I tell them sometimes like it's time to wrap it up. It's time to like, you know what yeah. I mean? Or it's like, yeah. you got to know it's like, and there's like, it's, there's like a certain level of accountability with yourself. And he's like, it's finding a balance of like, not just giving up, but also seeing it's like, am I even doing this? Cause I want to do this anymore mm. or because it's like, this is what I expect of myself or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know? And my thing is like, I, I'm a dreamer, man. I personally like, I'm so yeah. bad with even telling people like, no, don't are. do that because it's yeah. like, there's just so many stories and there's so many things. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's like, there are just so many people where it started late and everything. It's like, it's like, I'm like in love with my career is now, but it's like, I think it like, I wanted to quit so many different times or, yeah. or just be like, I don't know if I'm going to do this anymore, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, you just don't know. Yeah. And it's like, and it sucks because like, you know, I, I like, I could never talk someone out of their dream. I could never like do this time to hang it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's well, like, it's, it's just you, like, you've I could witness the miracle side of it now, you know, multiple times to the point where you're like, well, if I would have turned away then when I wanted to, I wouldn't have yeah. even had these opportunities now. Abs- so, dude, you, you, absolutely. Why, dude. Well, and, th- and that was a crazy thing about like 2019 when like the star girl in the movie happens, like you heard, you hear all these stories about like, like, um, you know, if they really like your character on a show, they'll add more episodes for you. Yeah. They'll let you in yeah, more yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And you're like, okay, bullshit. I've done this for a while. They're not just going to give you money and write you in more because they like you. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, and then the show and the Stargirl, like, the, like Henry's character got fleshed out more than he was supposed to be. And then like, and then it's like, people were like, once it's snowing, like it's just going to snowball down. Yep. And I was like, I, I'd never had like two huge bookings back to back like that. And it's literally in two weeks, I was going to something else. Like That's it was just like these myths were being broken and it's because you're allowing yourself to be like oh yeah i guess that can happen instead of being like there's no way there's no like you know what i mean so that's why i'm a very big advocate on like i will never be concrete about this is how things are going to work because i don't know Dude, i don't know i remember so when like, we were living together you were going through a little bit of that dry spell because you hadn't booked something in a little well, dude, that while was my, that was my joke i was like well i'm yeah. not booking anything anyway so i'm chilling like you know yeah. what i mean it's yeah. like but it but it's even that thing it's like even allowing yourself to think that though it's like yeah. well then probably i won't get anything because i'm saying i'm Trap, not going exactly, to and i'm not going exactly. to you know what i mean it's like and it's like and that was a great thing about last year is i finally came to accept like i just don't think like this is a year i'm just going to be chilling and i was like but you know, i know next year I'm and you became be going, content you know with, what I mean? with just chilling, and then that's when you just chilling be. became full on game mode, baby. Well, yeah. that's chilling, when you ended chilling's up- a part of a, a part of life, man. Like it's like solstice is so important. Like yeah. it's uh, you know what I mean. It's yeah. like that's that's yeah. so important to just be with yourself and get to know yourself. And it's like so many people are scared of that, and understandably, you know, so many people are scared scared of being in their head just from what they've gone through and experienced yeah. in their own yeah. life and what's going on in their head. And it's it's not always something you need to do alone, but I do think it's an amazing gift when you learn how to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. That's Jake. What would be your uh, total time? What would be your like brand? Like if you're like on the billboards, right? And it's like, all right, Jake Austin Walker. He's known for X. Do you have like mm. a brand or like message or like thing that you want to be known for? Because if you are that kid that's 15 and you're heavy set and you're like, I'm just going to be the heavy set kid. I'll be funny. And that's great. That's going to be my brand. And then all of a sudden you break through that mold right now, the fucking doors are open and you're navigating Ooh. that. Like what, what is the goal? Because I know that we've talked about uh, like typecasting in Hollywood and, and people are trying to put you in one certain thing. So obviously you have this like image in your head that you want to break through and just be something different. So is it, is there something specific or is it just the flexibility to be so many different things at once? Dude, my goal is to always drop this like facade bullshit. Mm, like that's yeah. always been like my biggest goal with this job is like there's a lot of crazy stuff to it. Like I've been in a lot of weird rooms and I've had a lot of fun and like there, there's like a lot of like crazy world to it, like crazy experience. You'll you'll never see anything else. And like I completely get by and get behind that. But it's also it's like there's just like also a lot of bullshit to it. It's yeah. like it's like I would just love for people to have someone and there's plenty of people out there. Like I think Tom Hardy and people like that are great examples that are just like I just love doing it. I am who I am. Period. Right. Like, but I think we just need a lot more of that because I just still think we like. I don't. I don't want to say what I lied is a lot of bullshit people. I don't know their lives. I'm not going to yeah. say it's bullshit. But I'm just saying like, there is just this veil of like, 
you know, it's been around forever, but it's like yeah. just getting rid of this sort of like, there's just so much bullshit. Like, right. you know what I yeah. mean? It's yeah. like, just be you, just be you yeah. do this extravagant thing that you do. Right. And I know it's like, how, it's probably hard to be you and be admired mm. by millions and do these things that are like life changing for some people and stuff like that. It's like, it's like, I, I, I can understand that, but it's also, it's like, just try your best to be you. I think Tom yeah. Holland's a great example too. It's just like, that would, if you could even call it a brand, I mean, that would be my thing. It's just yeah. to be like, the Jake you see doing whatever is the same Jake you're going to meet if you run into me at a bar or at a That's grocery great. store or I something like that. Yeah. It's like that, that will never change just because yeah. I've met so many people and been let down so many times that it's just like, I don't yeah. want to be that person for somebody. If, if yeah, it man. all works out and I am that person, it's like, that's the brand. I just want the brand yeah. to just be like, just you know, authentic. I want to, I want to authentic. I just want to beer with that dude. And it's like, and it's like, I want to be, Oh, he's really cool doing this. Or he's really cool doing that. Well, Hey, you come up to the grocery store. We're going to fucking chat our asses off, man. Yeah. Like that's what, like I want it to always be. And, yeah. Yeah. and you know, and just like, like you just hear so many stories. People are like, don't look them in the eyes. Don't talk to them about this. Yeah. And then you yeah. see it in person. And you're like, Oh my God, people allow you to do this. Yeah. And that's the problem. It's like, yeah. they wouldn't do that if they didn't know they were allowed to do it. Like yeah. if they, if you know what I mean? And it's like yeah. weeding that crap out, like yeah. getting rid of that like yeah. that's absurd and it's just because of this industry it's like we kind of like allow it sometimes it's yeah. like no it's like that's Do ridiculous you, it doesn't matter that you say things in front of a camera like that's ridiculous 100%. you know what i mean like I, I don't i hope that doesn't come across douchey or anything but i do just want it to be that like pure authenticity it's like right. when when i've been lucky enough to meet people i really idolize and they're amazing at what they do and then you meet them and you're just like, oh my God, you're also yeah. insanely yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's like, that's all I'm going for. Like, all I'm going for is to be good at what I do and also being transparent. Like, yeah. that version yeah, you man. see anywhere is the version you're going to get, yeah. you know, in person. I can like, 100% that, that's all say that out of all the years I've known you, dude, you've 100% been the same person all the way through. And you've been always been super inspiring, whether it's come to, like, you saying, hey, read this book, or hey, dude, keep your head up, or hey, like, <laughs> let me help you out with that audition. Stop drinking. A lot of those. <laughs> a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of that, dude. Um, no, I appreciate But no, you, dude, seriously. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, Mike, you have any final things to say, bro? Yeah, I mean, look, coming into this podcast, was I excited about Jake Austin Walker? Hell yeah. yeah. Connor, what the fuck, dude? He's our guest, dude. <laughs> oh, you're right, you're right. But after, after talking to the man, am I happy with how it went? No. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, yes. You, you consistently exceed expectations, man. Honestly, I think that you're uh, really, you're true. one of the most talented people that I know. You are incredibly humble, um, sometimes to your own deficit. I think you got it. You know, no, just, please go on. Go on. No, man. Honestly, you're 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 a, a true gem, dude. And I, I just I think that we're uh, you know I consider myself lucky to be uh, friends with you, and I think yeah. that you. You do, you inspire people, but you do it through action, not through words. And I think that's yeah. an important thing. It's not just like, oh, I'm Jake and I'm going to be preachy online and tell people how to live their lives. No, it's like, you're just out there doing your thing. And the people that are watching you are taking notice and the ones that aren't will be soon. So yeah. I, I think that it's, it's special, man. What you got going on is special. And I, uh, I think that a lot of people can, can learn from your example. And uh, yeah, we're lucky to now have you. Now compliment here, us, Jake. Ooh. Well, yeah, shit, I love you, boys. <laughs> that's, 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 that's really nice. It's probably the nicest thing someone said to me in the past year. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's uh, I don't know how to take that. Thank that's you so heavy. much, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. No, well, you guys are fucking great. This is this is so much fun. I'm so proud of you yeah. guys for taking the time to do something during yeah. this quarantine and be like, screw Thanks, it. Man. Let's like, yeah. let's make a project. And this is sick. It's been I'm fun, proud of you bro. Boys. I'm glad we got to yeah. have you on. Now, Jake, is there before we get you go before we get you off the podcast? Where can people find hmm. you? Music, everything. Talk. Hit us up. Link up. Okay, so I made my Insta really hard. It's at Jake Austin Walker. Um, and so you can follow that and see all the shit I get up to. Not much. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Twitter is uh, uh, Jake A. Walker, or I think, or something like that. Um, and and yeah, and then Spotify is just Jake Austin Walker. And uh, and yeah, we got a new movie, 12 Mighty Orphans, coming out about oh, 12 yeah. Mighty Hell Orphans. Yeah, um, yeah, in theaters, uh, baby. In theaters. Yeah, in, in theaters. theaters we got a movie star in theaters. on our hands. There you go. I know. I can't. I can't wait to uh, to check it out, man. I'm I'm really actually I'm I'm actually really really pumped for it. Good man. Um, yeah, we're stoked too. But yeah, dude. Then other than that, just. You know, chilling in the desert. It's Seriously. great. Take well, it all. I can't, yeah. wait to, yeah, can't wait to come up there and dig some holes with you, buddy. Yeah, exactly. yeah man, absolutely. All right, guys. All right, well, well, look, Jake, we love you, dude. Yeah, guys, we appreciate you. That's about it. I'm Connor Stoops. I'm Mike Bloodstein. I'm... 
happened. I'm Jake Austin Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and you just watch the Rolls of Bros, guys. Thanks so much. Guys. Take it easy. Uh, how do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs>